Hello guys, this is Paul from WMR in Stewart, Florida. On our last video, we talked about valve adjustments and the importance of cylinder head maintenance. Today, we're gonna to talk about valve guide replacements. That is a very important procedure that has to be performed by a seasoned technician. We at WMR have all the tools that we need to perform this task. Valve guides are one of the most important components in your valve train. That is what keeps your valve true in relation to the valve seat. It allows the valve to glide upwards and downwards in a very fast motion. Valve guides have to have a very good thermal conductivity. The temperatures that are reached within the combustion chamber are very, very high. And your valve guide is gonna help the valve stem dissipate some of its heat when it's going up and down. One of the most common failures for valve guides is the valve guide falling out of its bore. That could happen for a couple of reasons. Number one, if the valve guide's been replaced in your cylinder head more than once and the correct fitment has not been checked, it will fall out under extreme heat. If the bore is too big, it will not be able to hold the valve guide anymore and it'll start to float until it finally falls out. The second common failure for valve guide is just regular wear and tear. The action of the valve stem going up and down and trying to move in all different directions as the combustion chamber ignites internally, it'll make the internal diameter of the valve guide oval or an irregular shape. If this is the case, your valve is gonna start to shift from side to side. It's probably not gonna seal well anymore and it's gonna cause problems in your cylinder head. The procedure to replacing your valve guides typically starts with measuring your valve guide projected protrusion. This is how far your valve guide sticks out of your cylinder head. This is a very important measurement. If the valve guide is sticking out too far, you may have the risk of the valve retainer hitting the top of the valve guide. And if the valve guide is sticking down too far, you may have the risk of the head of the valve hitting the bottom part of your valve guide. Next, we proceed to heat up your cylinder head. Typically, an oven is your best option for this. Do not use open flame. Once the head is hot to the desired temperature, you remove it and proceed to remove the valve guide. Make sure to use a valve guide remover tool of the correct diameter. Once your valve guide has been removed, let the head cool down. You don't wanna use water or any type of chemical to cool down the head. This may damage it. The best thing to do is just to let it sit in a safe place away from everybody and maybe put a fan next to it. Once your head is to room temperature, it's very important to measure the inside diameter of the valve guide bore. This is the hole where the new valve guide is gonna go into your cylinder head. Typically, you want about a 1,000th to 2,000th of an interference fitment between the outside diameter of your valve guide and the inside diameter of the bore in your cylinder head. If the bore is too big, your valve guide will fall out. It'll fall down into the valve and it'll destroy your cylinder head. But if the clearance is too small, you're gonna have a very hard time driving your valve guide into the head and you may break it trying to do so. After you've gathered all your data and your measurements are up to spec and you're satisfied, the next step is to heat up your cylinder head again. What we want to do is we want to expand the bore in the cylinder head, and then we want to cool down the valve guide. Once the cylinder head is hot, you remove it from the oven, you grab your cooled down valve guide, and you drive it in. Make sure to pay attention to the projected protrusion of the valve guide. Measure it as you're driving it in, 
and you get to a desired point, go ahead and measure the protrusion and adjust as necessary. You do want to perform this step in a very quick manner because the heat from the cylinder head is transferring quickly onto your valve guide and the valve guide is going to start getting very tight inside the cylinder head. After you do this, again, take the head to a safe location and let it cool down to room temperature. After letting your cylinder head cool down, is to remount the inside diameter of your valve guide. It's very important to do that because during this whole procedure, the inside diameter of the valve guide may have gotten a little bit distorted or sometimes they're just a little bit oversized. So to do this, make sure to refer to your service manual to get the correct clearance between the valve stem and the valve guide inside diameter. We at WMR use a Rottler machine, SG7, this will guarantee concentricity between the valve guide and the valve seat. Once we cut the correct diameter valve guide, we proceed to inspect. We slide the new valve in and we check it with our vacuum machine to make sure that the valve is contacting the seat in its entirety. So we've talked about valve guide replacements, possible failures, and the importance of the precise measurement when performing this task. In our next video, we will talk about valve seat replacement. Thank you for watching.